Well, hello there, everybody. We Paddy from Across the Shock, and I'm back at you with a... It's an unusual video for me. I don't do a whole lot of fixed blades, but I do do them. Um, and I do them on knives that I really like, because I don't... I, I do use fixed blade knives, and I use them down my caravan more than up in my house. I live in an apartment, so there isn't much use. If I'm going into the woods, yes, I'll take a fixed blade with me, because that's what the woods are for. But mostly down the caravan, I'll carry and use a fixed blade. But this is, you probably see by the title, this excites me because this is a local dealer here in Northern Ireland from Armagh. His name is Jimmy Morrow. Really, really nice man. Spoke to him on the phone, contacted him, said I was trying to do British dealers. And he very kindly sent me two knives, uh, one of which he said I could keep for the channel. And this is the one I've done, I've kept. And this is one of his newer models. It's one that's been in his head for a while and he, he just finally done it. This is a very small going concern. This is not um, some slick big operation. This is somebody who just has a passion for making knives, fixed blade knives. He uses them. He's enjoying the design. This is his leather sheath as well. So this is just a damn talented man that there seems to be so many of in the UK who don't boast their products and I just wish more of them would. So I, first of all I want to thank him for this knife. I am going to enjoy the heck out of this. I'm not, I don't need a big bushcraft knife. I don't camp anymore. Well I don't camp, I day camp is probably what the way I'm doing. I take the grandkids down to the beach, we'll make a fire, we'll split some small kindling which are usually just you know bits of wood lying about, we'll snap them, break them up, put them in a fire. But this knife will go really well because, to me, this knife can do a bit of everything. It wouldn't be what I would call a bushcraft knife, but it's a... This is a yard knife. This is a, a camping for the day knife. This is just a really good... I'm getting... I'm, shall I just show it to you, shall I? No, I'm not going to. <laughs> now, this is what I like. I asked um, Jimmy if he'd give me a wee sort of a page about him and, and what he described his knives as and this is this is his knives down to a T. This is just sheer honesty of a man who enjoys doing what he's doing. And I'm gonna give you his words. He would describe his work as being utility orientated, which it has to be to be a fixed blade, with an emphasis emphasis on practicality as well as attractive appearance. Now, is that not just simple, concise? That's what you want. In any size of a knife, you want them qualities. This is a little working knife. This is a knife I can go and break down boxes with, and I have and will do again. Fantastic for it. But it will, it will do wood. It'll let you, if you want to carve a big piece, this is not intricate carving. We'll talk about that later. But this is just a do-all sort of stocky little knife. I love it. It weighs about six ounces. Now, that's not including the case. So maybe just over six ounces with this leather pouch. Look at this leather pouch. Look how well that has been welted. Look how well that has been sewn. Great little belt sheath. It's not a dangler, but it keeps it right and low. It's not going to jab you in the side. I just love the red stitching. Really do love it. Now... They both come in these. Um, here is the knife. Look at that little puppy. Is that, look at that blade shape. How would I describe that? It's like a, a modified um, knife. <laughs> it's just, it's like a clip. You know, it's got a huge big belly. It just starts here and goes right the way through. So you could actually use this, you know, in the kitchen, you know, to do camp duties, to cut up. But it's the, look at the blade stock on that. What is that? I'm going to give you a wee rough. I don't, I don't do a whole lot of measurements, but that is about, good gosh, that's about five mil, four mil. Where are we? Oh, get it on the other side when I'm on it. It's a, <laughs> Typical paddy. It's nearly four mil, about three and a half mil. So, I mean, it's a good sturdy blade. It is just, so look at that mirror polish. Look, there's me behind there. Look at that on that blade. Now this is, you know, <laughs> I just think his mirror polish is absolutely cracking. Look how clear. It, it makes this knife look way more expensive than what it should be. 
but yet he keeps it. I'm going to keep wiping this because it's just a lovely looking blade. This brass, brass pins, brass lanyard hole. Look how well that is. G10. So this knife will do it. And look at that full tang, red liners. It's everything you would want. And that's my full fist on there. There's still room left over. So you've got a large hand. You'll fit on here absolutely fine. An absolutely cracker. I love the fact you can get up there. But I also love this fact. I can get my finger up to this. So the blade length on this is, it's got a cutting edge of about three and a quarter. And it's just over three and a quarter long. But really nice. Overall length is seven and a half inches. So like I said, this is a real utility knife. This is a knife you can use for doing most things. You could even baton with that. You know, if you're going to break down small kindling, you would have no problem. No problem. In fact, I will. I know when I'm breaking down small kindling, that's just perfect for me. But if you just want to sit there and take chunks off a bit of wood, this is the blade for you. It's in 1095. Perfect steel for bushcraft because it's... It's a hard user. You can beat it. You can do whatever you want. It's not going to chip on you. It's just a really good bushcraft knife blade steel. I just love it. It's perfect. And it keeps the price. You don't need M390 in a bushcraft. You want something that you can sharpen easy in the field. 1095 is perfect for in the field. You literally take a wee pen sharpener with you and you can have this knife and batter it all day long. A couple of quick swifts, you know, rubs in between on a little... Even that wee, a wee, what is it, the, I can't think what it's called now. Just a wee small pen blade sharpener. Put it in your bag. You'll never have to worry about this going dull. It won't. If you have M390 with you, you have to take something specialised, diamond stones, to do it. I mean, you could sharpen this in a river stone. And that's the truth, you know, really easily. I have done that. And there's videos on it. If you go back on that channel of mine somewhere. But I just think, for somebody who makes this, and... I'm not going to say in a shed. He has a little workshop now. But a little bit about him. He started thinking he was going to... Well, he started practicing making knives in 2012. He bought a, a 12 by 72 grinder from the States. Got it sent over. But in 2013, he then went to a Bushcraft Forge. Uh, it was a course at Bushcraft Forge, sorry. Uh, and run by a man called Owen Bush. Now, I'm not up in the, the, the forgers, but to go and do that is great. He learned his trade, the basic parts of his trade, and then went back and worked on it. In 2015, after all them years of practice, he managed to get a room to set up a proper workbench area, and he began working part-time at making blades and using smithing techniques and stock removal. So he's doing a bit of everything. He has now, since the lockdown, it's been a nightmare over here. He now has a really good Instagram presence. And he's been doing more and more on his Instagram. And I believe that's that's where he's going to be going. Because he is a part-time knife maker. So the Instagram is called Dreadnought Forge, which I think is lovely. It's on Facebook and it's Dreadnought under, underscore Forge. Uh, on Instagram. I'll put them down below so you don't have to worry about them. But what do you think? Is this the sort of fixed blade that you would like? And I'm going to give you rough prices. His prices start just over, well, just just, just over 150 for, for something like this. I'm sure he does smaller, cheaper ones and he does much bigger ones. He will design, you know, he'll, he'll make a knife for you. That's what he does. I just believe, get behind, if you want something like this, once you go on to his Dreadnought Forge webpage, or, you know, his Instagram and his Facebook, get on, especially Facebook or Instagram. I am so bad with technology. Instagram's the one that he's got a great presence on. <laughs> if you go on there, it'll, there's links to his, to where you can buy his knives, you can chat with him. Let him know that Paddy sent you over and, and say hello to him. And just say, you know, you've been looking at his knives and you'll get just... It's just to give him a bit of encouragement from us. I, I just think somebody, again, who's put his own heart and soul into making something. And to make something like this, look at that. It's just a lovely knife. Look, the fit and finish, like, you know, we always say this with GECs, but this is a fixed blade. And it's in, you know, it is, there's not the slightest gap in this whatsoever. 
The red liner is perfect. The brass, look at that, lines up. So his attention to detail is absolutely amazing. There's some little bits, and you know, I'm sure he's not going to, there's some little bits here that, well, you know, probably they'll come better polished when he's doing a knife. This was just done for me. But there's, that makes it handmade. That's what makes it handmade. The little tiny, and they are so tiny. I'm really nitpicking because sometimes I feel as if we have to nitpick, but I'll not nitpick for me. This would never affect me whatsoever. It's the blade, that beautiful mirror finish. Absolutely stunning. Will that stay there forever? You know, not if you're going to use it a lot, but for the use that I'm going to. Now, I used this and I resharpened it. I put my edge on it at 20 degrees. Some people like their bushcraft knives at sort of 25 degrees because they're going to baton it a lot. I'm not going to baton this a lot. This is going to be more for in-house around the caravan. So I don't need a real... I need an edge that's going to cut as well. Here's a little bit of paper. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, that 1095 just takes a wicked, wicked edge. It, look at that. You can take wee shavings all the way down. It's just the most beautiful knife. And the 1095 seems to be, really does seem to be heat treated well. I believe he does it all himself. But it's just, I'm just excited that it's somebody from Northern Ireland. But... As a knife lover and knife collector, I'm just excited because I have got a beautiful knife as a gift from a local knife maker. And it doesn't get any better than that. Do you know, this knife will not go to This is just, this is a knife I can use till the end of my day and hand down to my kids. It's not going to, it's 1095. You're going to have to look after it a wee bit. And by a wee bit, I mean just a wee bit. It's easy to stick a drop of oil on a 1095 blade. But I'll let this tarnish, I'll let it turn into a working blade. But I'm in no rush to get there. I'm in no rush to get there. I, I can't believe what a lovely edge it took. It really did. And it took me about 10 minutes to reprofile this. I used my little workshop. The, the, you've only got three different settings on it. 320, 600. And then you have uh, a honing piece, which is just a ceramic. Uh, and I took about 10 minutes and I got a screaming edge on it. A really, really screaming edge. So... It's just a super utility knife. And that's what it is. It's a utility knife. I'm trying to think of some of the other. Um, he's done me another one. I'm going to show you that at the end of it. Because I'm going to do a review on it as well. And just talk a bit about it. Because it's a completely different blade shape. Although it's in that utility standard. I think it's a knife that will appeal to. A, maybe a completely different. Excuse my nails. Um, a completely different viewer that I would have than this is. This, this, you know, it, it, this looks big and stocky. Uh, it's not a six ounces, you know what I mean? And then you've got a beautiful sheath like this to put it in. I mean, what, you know, what difference does the weight make? What difference does the weight make to something like that? It really doesn't. So I'll talk, I'll leave a wee bit more and I'll talk a wee bit more about Jimmy. But I'll put Dreadnought Forge and his Facebook and Dreadnought underscore Forge down below in the description. Get over there. Have a look at what he makes. He makes some beauties. And bigger than this as well. And he makes the order. And you're getting that special treatment. And his prices are not unreasonable at all. For a handmade, personally loved knife. That you've got a guarantee of the, of the man's local in the UK. I just, I'm, I'm over the moon. I think it's great. What I'm going to compare it to. Because, you know, I don't use fixed blades a whole lot in my everyday life this size perfect i will use but this is the one i do use a lot and you'll see on my instagram and um, this is the lt right frontier so you can see the size that little frontier this is all right for opening letters or cutting a wee box up um, it's often used you can see it's often used for cutting open packages it's used for breaking down boxes but this will go to the, a package opener and that sort of light juice this here I'll use for cutting boxes up and breaking them down. I take mine down to the bin. I'll maybe do that one day. I'll take it down to the bin. You'll see where I do it. I just stand there and cut it up. And people come in and think I'm half to half. So there you go. So that's what I'm used to just around the house. This is what I've got now. And I want to show you the blade difference. Look at the difference in the blade. I just think that blade shape is gorgeous. I'm going to have to get a name for it. What does he call it? Um, I don't think he's even named this pattern. 
the next one I'm going to do is a, a Lanny's clip. Well, yeah, it's it's something very like a, a Lanny's clip inspired. But this is just, it's nearly Bowie-like. It really is nearly Bowie-like. And I just love this. There you go. Enough waffle. It's a local dealer. It's a UK dealer. Pop over to his Instagram and please say hello from Patty and let him know that we're, we've seen his work. We'll have a look at it. And if you want to try buying something, I recommend it. I really do recommend it. Paddy's away. Cup of tea time. Thank you so much for watching. Jimmy, I really appreciate this knife. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to show you the other one. And I'm going to do a separate review on this because it's a different shaped uh, uh, sheath. Still in that beautiful red. His work is very consistent. It's just gorgeous. So you've got the same basic materials in this but you have look at that look at that this is in the in the testing process this is a, a clip a lanny's tip sort of look alike bit of a thinner blade stock i believe or is it just about the same no it's actually just about the same yeah same blade stock but a smaller blade and this would be maybe more for somebody about the house rather than a frontier something like this here which is a bit stockier Probably not much difference in weight. A little bit lighter, but look how well made again. You're getting that consistency, and that's what I like. I've got two things that are consistent, and this was just made. You can see I've been using this one. So I'm going to leave that with you. Go and give him a look. Check him out. Thanks very much. Paddy's away. Cup of tea time. Jimmy, thanks again. All the best now. Bye.